Just because we've done something for a long period of time, it does not mean that we have to accept that as being our culture. Our culture is not a bleached out black man. You can say it's Garvey though. The way black women carry themselves in the name of entertainment is embarrassing. Everyone knows where we rank in society. So the second we rise, even one position above another race, we become a threat. You really are killing off the culture. Okay guys, welcome back to my channel. As standard, child of most high, most high. And that's the truth. Today is going to be a video essay. I want to challenge what you believe is your culture and why you think that is your culture and why you've accepted and normalized it as being your culture. Yeah, so today's about just challenging who you think you are culturally. Okay, let's go. Let me tell you where this started. I was minding my own damn business in my bed with my righteous self and I was scrolling. I saw Spice on stage. <laughs> Now Spice must have performed somewhere. I'm not even gonna try to look up to a tough way, but I don't really care. It was an outside concert. And I saw this big ass ass and I said, what is this Spice? Can you pick out the shoes real quick? A peachy. Because I don't remember her having her body done, right? I don't remember her. I always kind of imagined her in my head as being like a naturally curvy person, but this was abnormally curvy. So I'm looking at now, watching this performance, she's coming out with her masculine style, screaming up, screaming on the place. And then she starts doing, you know, what they do <laughs> dancing and grinding and whining and. <laughs> just grieved in my spirit guys i was so grieved and it's, it's the same thing i always ask what are we doing why are we doing this is this all we can do is this, is this all black people black jamaican people are capable of we gotta start calling these people queens boy she just looks ridiculous the body is so abnormally shaped it's just this has got to be a comedy show. Like, if surely, if I went from this country and like, I weren't used to seeing this behaviour, I would think this was a comedy show about to, about to happen right now. It's so embarrassing. Is Am I the only one who thinks this is embarrassing? Like, Spice has a great voice. I've always just stood in, powerful. But when it comes to the, the performance and the body, the black woman's body, the things that they do, the way black women carry themselves in the name of entertainment is embarrassing. It's as simple as this. Because this behaviour is so normalised, if I were to speak out on it, people assume, because I'm Jamaican, I must like Spice, I must like Bob's Cocktail, I must like Mavado, by default, like I don't have my own beliefs uh, as an individual. That bothers me. That does bother me. I'm not a fan of this behaviour, you understand? But then fling up their leg and start patting their vaginas and stuff like that. Do you believe that's your culture? Do you really believe that that is your culture? Let's start off by defining what is culture. It's the idea, customs, and social behavior of a particular people or society, okay? Customs is a way of behaving or a belief that has been established for a long time, yeah? Our culture, and that, it's the word customs that did it for me. Yes, behavior, but it's a way of behaving that has been established for a long time. So that means if we do something for a long period of time, we, we will deem that to be our culture. We will class that to be drinking culture. I'm here to say to you today, let's challenge that. Just because we've um, done something for a long period of time, it does not mean that we have to accept that as being our culture. If it doesn't serve us in a, in a healthy or, or positive way, you understand? You understand? We've been behaving like this for a relatively long time to where we have accepted it. I'm challenging you to reject it. Reject it. Why? This is bedroom behavior. We are playing out sexual acts from the bedroom in our music videos, on stage, and recording it, fun and games. I'm recording it entertainment. <laughs> this is black art this is black music this is black performance and it's shameful i don't know any other culture that will do that and accept that and normalize that why do we normalize such slackness in our culture and by the way dance hall is not making culture it's a subculture it's a music drama 
you can disagree if you want you understand but take time also there are commenting rules on my page from now on okay now we're getting into dark mode you understand so if you look under my page and say something make sure it's righteous make sure you follow the rules why do you think that's your culture like have you ever questioned or critically just looked at your own culture and asked what is that why do we do that where does that come from like you do understand that your understanding of Jamaican culture most likely has been shaped by media. I'm even gonna go so far as, far as to say that I don't believe you even know what Jamaican culture is. You think Jamaican culture is Vibes Cartel, you think it's Dancer, you think it's Magnum, you think it's Guinness Punch, and don't get twisted, the elements of the culture, but that is not that is not the, the heart, the core of Jamaican culture. And like, even other races think that our culture is just, just consists of pushy, whining, daggering, and vibes cartel. Our culture is not a bleached out black man. That is not it. It's somebody else. You can say it's Garvey though. It's Garvey. Do you even know who Garvey is? So I understand that each generation sees, has a different definition of Jamaican culture, but I feel like we as like, British born as well, we don't know. I feel like we think we do know, we don't. We've allowed um, artists, mostly artists really, and a specific genre of music to shape how you view and how you experience the entire Jamaican culture. You've been asked the entire Jamaican culture, it's not it's a subculture, it's a tiny part of the culture. You've made that represent Jamaica on an international level. Like how people think Rastafari uh, is a Jamaican culture. Dance hall is, is a small subculture. So someone says, I don't, I don't listen to that, I don't know who that is, that shouldn't be an issue. That does not make them less Jamaican. But you know what it does? Not know who Garvey is, what Garveyism is. Larry them bleached out mentally ill, a low self-esteem artist to shape your understanding of Jamaican culture. Does your grandma know who Vibes Cartel is? Or mama do? So is, is she Jamaican? Does your grandma dagger and wipe on her head? No. Is she Jamaican? So how is it that your grandma doesn't do those things, but then I don't do those things, I'm not Jamaican, but your grandma is? Because she was born there. Okay. The time. The time. There are generational differences that impact the way that we see Jamaicans and Jamaican culture. Yeah? Okay. So, what do you think is Jamaican culture? What do you think it consists of? Music, food, accent, and language, right? Dreadlocks, marijuana, mm -hmm. Guinness punch, magnum, curry go rice. Is that your culture? Is that it? Is that it? That's an aspect of the cult of the culture, but a lot of you have reduced the culture just those those things. There needs to be like a, a deeper understanding of self. I'm gonna teach you. We can learn together, yeah. We can learn together about the true Jamaican culture, what that is, and the culture is always gonna go back to beliefs and values. I believe every generation should challenge the beliefs established by those before them. We can't just continue to act in this way, like robots. We're not robots. We have to look and reassess and say, ah. This was done by our great our great grandparents, our grandparents. Does this still serve us? Should we still continue in this way? Should we still eat in this way? This food was brought over here by this in this era for these people. Yeah, I like it, but should we now consider expanding our diet? But don't get upset, okay? Just challenging you. The Jamaican breadfruit was brought over, brought over from Tahiti to the Caribbean. Why? To feed slaves. Let me tell you something. We love breadfruit. I've had it, I personally take, feel like it tastes like sofa foam, it, like the foam in a sofa. It does have, there's nothing to it to me. I, I don't understand the um, obsession with breadfruit. It doesn't taste good. This is not about breadfruit, it's about me challenging what you what you believe to be your culture, okay? Calm down. Okay, so did you know that? That breadfruit was brought over in the 18th century by a man called Captain William Bly to feed the enslaved people. And that has become a part of our culture, a staple. Now initially, it wouldn't take it was hard to grow, but it grew. We loved it. The British born tend to not be in a breadfruit thing, but y'all I like their breadfruit. Should we re-look at what we consider to be a part of the Jamaican diet? The Jamaican diet um, was always restricted. They were rationed. They were rationed with pork, with salt fish, and cornmeal, these kind of foods. Yeah, you hear that? Cornmeal, salt fish, and pork. Do you hear that? Don't get all funny, it's not a big deal. Like, don't get all sensitive. Do people get sensitive when you start discussing these things. Come on, if you're very sensitive, like, come off the video. Yeah, I know you enjoy it, it's fucking great. But my thing is, should we eliminate breadfruit from our diet, knowing the reason why it was 
brought over here and how, how, it, how it has now become a Jamaican staple in our diet and does knowing where it, where it came from and how it came here does that matter or are we more focused on how it feels you know certain cuts of meat that we eat pigtail chicken foot that we can afford better cuts of meat should we eradicate certain cuts from the Jamaican culture from the Jamaican diet now we know better now we know the truth about where it's origins and how we got how it became part of our culture our diet should we now say, ah, I reject that part of me. You cannot continue to operate in the same way because those before us did that and think that's a good reason. And my grandma did it, my mom did it, so, so. They want food. We can pick out the shoes real quick. A peachy, what? I feel like because Spice has spent some time around the American, she's literally just imitating the American, black American standard of beauty and carrying herself, you understand? I understand that the obsession with the ass is a part of the black African culture, right? It stems from Africa, right? But it's like this, the um, deformed look, overly round, overly shaped look, is an American thing. And I feel like we allow ourselves to be too easily influenced by Americans as well. That's another thing. And I understand that Americans have the gift of influence and they're very much the, more, the main contributors of shaping black culture. But we need to start thinking about how we allow them to influence us and what we allow as a part of our culture and our behaviour. Does this serve us in a positive way? Is this gonna uplift us, help us to function as a community, help us increase our worth and value in the eyes of our, our others and ourselves? And if not, then we can get rid of it. You understand? There should be a generational assessment of our values and our morals as, as, as Jamaican people, as just cultural period. We are overly influenced by African-American people to our own detriment and yes we have behavior that's specific to our culture everything's just being kind of amplified now because of the i think i say attack on the black woman's identity in america that's affecting our identity it's all connected i have to comment on the american because it's, it's all connected how they carry themselves how they see themselves how they experience life affects us how we live over here does not fucking affect them they're not even um, aware of our, our fucking existence but they cough they breathe they suffer, they attack, attack the whole um, black diaspora. I think that's fucked. And so I have to speak on these issues, you understand? Because it affects me day to day. No, so you aren't striving for nothing. You want bigger. So okay, you want more, you want to grow for more, climb for more. You're going to be smacked in the head with this stereotype about who you are and what you're capable of. When I step in the room as a black woman, I know that I am the most competent there and I'm the most capable there. But do you think the world sees me as the most capable and competent in that room? No, and the most overlooked and underestimated and it has to do with how you carry yourselves. The way you carry yourselves, this overly sexualized, um, promiscuous way of moving your body for entertainment is damaging the way that black people and see themselves and the way other races see us and the way we experience life as a result. Black people, we are already at the bottom. We are the lowest in rank in society, facts. Everyone knows that, that's not up for debate. You'd think that a group of people who suffer economically in every system healthcare justice housing every system you think that people who are in the bottom of society would be more mindful of how they carry themselves in public you think they would care and make the connection between okay if i carry myself in this way as people who are at the bottom people are going to see us as it as even less i'm contributing to my own suffering you think that people would be able to see make the connection between how they behave in public spaces public spaces and how they're perceived by other races and how that affects your opportunity and where you continue to rank. Black people are contributing to those it. And it's amazing how they can't make the connection. A lot of people was not care because it feels good, it's fun. Like Spice continues to say it's fun and games. This is not fun and games. This is the name that we've assigned this behavior, fun and games. This is not fun and games. But why are we calling this fun and games? It is not fun and games. It's programming from slavery. We've become desensitized to the act of sex because of what they did to us during slavery. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a bit of a rundown on that because I don't think you even know what the fuck I'm talking about. Let me tell you what happened during slavery in Jamaica. Pops of sex and how they bred us, right? And this is the thing about AI. This is how you can tell AI is what AI is why because whenever I want to talk about things like slavery and breeding, they want to act like oh this is a sensitive subject. It's not a sensitive for who? It's not about it being sensitive for me. It's about them denying and not having to acknowledge their, their past sins and their past behaviour. They can't even answer, answer, answer this simple question I'm trying to ask them. Oh, fucking people everywhere, man. In the fucking every, every, they're in every system and that's the problem. The problem's that they're in every fucking system. 
We gotta get our destinies and create our own systems, man, because this ain't gonna change. We were put on the plantations, treated as cattle, that didn't allow us to reproduce naturally, right? So pick our own spouses and slaves that were strong, bred, bred us like cattle, right? Um, in high numbers, you understand? So desensitizing us to the act of sex and um, disconnecting us from our bodies as well and our sexual identity. So what I see is that playing out today, you are desensitized to the act of sex. You think sex is just a game, it's fun. The act of sex, right, on stage. Why are you, why are you doing that? Why are we, do, why, how has sex become dance? Have you, you don't think, like, when you're all winding yourself up and that's why, having a good time. Like, why are we reproducing and sexual acts from the bedroom on stage? You don't think, like, wonder, like, why are we doing this? And that's the problem. And that's why you're the lowest race. That's why no one respects you. Even when challenged in, and, and you're trying to have a kind basic conversation, you, you don't see an issue with it. That's why we don't have shit. You don't, you don't see an issue with that behavior. Every other race will see an issue with that. You think we can fill a stage up with Indians like that and do that? You don't think the Sikhs will get together and cost them out? We got outraged. The Muslims and the Pakistanis, you can't do that. What are you doing? That's like a whore. They will say that, but our black men, bully, bully. They love when we pop up yes, and shake our back and, and the, in, in fact, let this be, yeah? They like it. They like it. They act like horse because it's a role that's familiar to them. Black women acting like this is familiar to everyone. It's nobody holds you to a high standard. That's why you should be offended when you behave like that. People allow you to do it and are entertained by you prostituting your body. You dancing in a promiscuous way is acceptable because no one holds you to a high standard. People don't have high expectations of you. That's really bad. That's really bad for black women and, and the black race. You should really care about that. You should really care about that. I care about that. This is the latest I've ever filmed before and technically should have ate my last meal at 8 pm so I'm off schedule but guess what you're worth it. And most important it leads to the deterioration of the black community. Have you ever wondered why no one corrects us when we do those things? Why everyone thinks it's funny it's funny? Because we're, we're simply breaking down our own community. It's like well let them do it. Everyone knows where we rank in society. In order for them to keep their position we have to stay where we are. So the second we rise even one position above another race we become a threat. When we behave in this way, in a sexual, suggestive and provocative way, it communicates that we don't have any class, we don't have any self-respect, we don't have any sense, we don't have any ambition. We don't even have the intellect to make the connection between how we carry ourselves and how other races treat us. And so we are quite simply contributing to our own demise, aren't we? Ultimately, and we can't see it because it's fun. The danger is that we've called this entertainment. I'm going to give it another name, but it's very important. When we name things, it's very important as well. We're going to get into that names and brainwashing and programming and how you name things and how you, how you choose to identify something, a behavior or a group of people and how that affects behavior. The spies kept saying, it's all fun and games. It's like fun and games, it's, it's dry. Okay. Let's play a game, yeah? It's called How Low Can You Go? How Low Can You Go? Try to think of some ways that the Jamaican community can make things even more difficult for themselves. Come on, tell me, you got any ideas? You know, what can we do to convince them that this is their culture? What can we do to influence their culture in the most negative way possible? What behavior can we condone to help aid in their self-destruction? All we'd have to do is continually show you this on screen over and over again. Look at the Jamaicans, watch them do this. Get a pen, and have everyone doing this. You can see that Yardi as cool and beautiful and sexy as he looks, attractive as he looks. Because you guys are attractive and you're cool. You make, you can take, make anything popular and boss around the world. Black people haven't got this. You see enough yardies taking this viral pen. <laughs> Pull up like this. You're going to get that pen and go like this. You're going to copy it because you've seen the Jamaicans do it enough to say, that's my culture, that's who I am. When it comes to programming, all it takes is just a repetition. You know, this is why media and social media are so dangerous, you know, but, you know, in the wrong hands, dangerous, but, you know, powerful in the right hands. Because it doesn't take much, really, to influence your culture. To be fair, you're not really shaping the culture anyway. African Americans are shaping the culture, even then it's white people who are signing specific artists to destroy the culture, to destroy the people. So we've done sex. We could do something like um, normalizing swearing and cussing, pull it into song, like, make a phrase. 
make it the tag of like a certain label in fact let's create a label give them all the fire beats we pay all these young men from the hood to produce songs for them give them a slogan that says kill niggas make it sound real cool make it pound from one ear, or ear from the left ear to the right i kill niggas every day oh shit that's that label they made the best music next thing you know it's going around the world because music does catch good music and black music catches and everyone's saying i kill niggas every day just because you've heard it in a song over and over again you can do it in music, we can do it in food, we can do it in fashion, we can do it with um, the entertainment industries. Only make the moves that dancers do revolve around their vagina. In fact, make them play our acts, sexual acts on the stage. That's good. How about food? It's a bit cool to only eat the private parts of certain animals. So let's, let's make it cool to eat cow vagina. How can we do that? Okay, let's get a black male and a black female from social media, pay them some money to promote this. And let's be careful to silence Rastafari because Rastafari are going to speak out. Let's make sure they don't speak out. Let's silence them, let's get ready to silence them and threaten them so that when they speak out, so that I can destroy the community. Let's make it normal to eat the, the pirate parts of every animal. Let's make it normal to drink blood. How can we do that? Think of some ways how, how we can make the black community, because they're the most influential people on the planet, make it cool to drink blood. This is part of the game. Eventually, I will have images to support this. I'm going to be doing this video again. Thank you for listening. Any questions, um, any rebuttals, welcome. When you comment, follow the commenting rules, okay? Country, culture, race, gender. If that's not there, those icons aren't there, you cannot comment, okay? Question I'm gonna ask you, what have you rejected from your culture? What aspects of Jamaican culture have you said, I reject that? Or what aspects of Caribbean culture have you said, I reject that, I don't like that. I don't like how it makes me feel, I don't like how it makes us look, For whatever reason. What have you rejected as being a part of your culture, even though everyone does it and why? Please leave that in the comment box. Okay, I'm really looking forward to reading it, okay guys? So I'm going to end with this. Why have you reduced the black woman's identity to just being a sexual identity? It just her sexuality. Why, why are we doing that? Like, the black woman is more than just her sexuality. But you, when, it, when it comes to like the online representation of black women, she leads with her sexuality and that alone what is that and it's not even in a classy mysterious seductive way it's just completely jezebelish what is that about i'd like to challenge you to develop other parts of your character i want to challenge you to, to develop other parts of your identity and to not leave with your sexuality because i know probably no one's ever said this to you before but you really are killing off the culture. But every time you behave like that, say it's a game, right? If that, that piece, that black female piece is decreasing in value and it's your fault. And you're all copying each other. And meanwhile, complaining about how society and how the world treats you. Not making a connection between how you carry yourself and how the world treats you. What you're putting out. You understand? God bless you and um, stay black, stay pure and stay righteous. And I will see you online, okay? Take care.